Welcome to Myths of Affairs. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. On February 29th, 2024, Tim Houston and the governing Nova Scotia Progressive Conservatives tabled the 2024-2025 Nova Scotia Provincial Budget. Now, according to the province, quote, the budget invests more to help Nova Scotians with the cost of living and build more diverse and resilient communities. It invests in building a world-class healthcare system that provides more care faster. And it invests in building a skilled workforce with the people we need to create more housing, provide health care, and drive a healthy economy, end quote. As with any financial plan, there are fiscal realities to be confronted with. With a projected revenue of $15.8 billion and expenses totaling $16.5 billion, budget 2024-2025 anticipates a deficit of $467.4 million. Now, in light of this budget, we turn our attention to Carolyn Bolivar Getson, the president of the Nova Scotia Federation of Municipalities, for her insights and reactions on yesterday's provincial budget. As a prominent advocate for municipal interests, her perspectives promises to shed light on the implications of the budgetary decisions on local communities and governance. This is Municipal Affairs. President, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. You were in Halifax yesterday when the provincial government tabled their 2024-2025 uh, provincial budget. Initial reactions from you as president of the Nova Scotia Federation of Municipalities. Well, I think there's definitely some items in here for municipalities, and there's some things that uh, are not in here that we continue to uh, ask for uh, as we move forward. I was unable to get to the budget uh, briefing yesterday due to the weather forecast, but uh, definitely have been updated and followed the budget uh, thoroughly as they moved it forward. Oh, I, I do apologize for, I got my information incorrect. I do apologize for that. But I want to talk about the things that the provincial government, the provincial budget got right, in your opinion. What were the key takeaways that you believe that municipalities will be set up better in 2024, 2025 in this budget? Uh, the additional in infrastructure uh, from a municipal perspective, the additional $70 million in the municipal capital growth fund uh from municipal affairs and housing, which uh, topped up the existing 32. So that went from 32 million up to 102 million. Uh, that's a huge uh, win for municipalities. Uh, one of the things that the provincial government continues to talk about is building Nova Scotia faster. And building Nova Scotia faster only happens when municipalities have the resources in hand to be able to go alongside our provincial counterpart. And Without that infrastructure in the ground, the pipes, uh, water and sewer, and the road infrastructure and everything else that goes along uh, with building communities, uh, it's impossible to do that. So municipalities are in dire need of infrastructure money, and this definitely is a step in the right direction. Step in the right direction, but I'm assuming municipalities could always want oh. a little bit more, correct? There's always uh, a deficit in municipal infrastructure when it comes to this, uh, but again, um, it will take the federal, provincial, and the municipalities working together to be able to do this. I, I wanted to stay on that uh, infrastructure for a few minutes here for a second, because okay. uh, one of the things that I, I, I took away, and I, I, I'm being a mayor of a rural community, I'm not sure if you, you noticed this and you were happy about it, but there seems to be a a desire to help uh, maintain our road infrastructure as well in this budget, whether it be gravel roads, rural roads, or even highways. Is this a, a good start to ensure that while all, not all infrastructure is roads, that the infrastructure that you currently do have in place is going to be properly maintained moving forward so that way municipalities don't have to worry about the maintenance of these roads? Absolutely, and when you mention rural municipalities, uh... Most of the roads in rural municipalities are owned by the provincial government. So when they're talking investment in gravel road programs, investment in 100 series highways and other programs such as that, it's definitely a win-win for municipalities as well. We may not be the government responsible, but we're the government that fields a lot of calls from our residents being the uh, closest uh, to the people. So from that perspective, yes. And believe me, when we get uh, 50 millimeters of rain and the frost starts to come out, 
uh, there's definitely a lot of uh, mud and stuck vehicles and everything else that we were dealing with yesterday before the freeze happened again. So again, those are calls that we do receive and it's welcome money into uh, the province when that happens. Now, in my conversations with uh, municipal leaders across the province, healthcare has been something that comes up on a regular uh, occurrence. This budget does focus a lot of its attention on refurbishment, uh, increasing capacity at healthcare facilities, but also uh, working with communities for mental health and support addictions uh, programs. Is this a good step in your opinion? And what do you hope that this budget investment will help municipalities the most with? Well, when I look again, um, healthcare is not a municipal jurisdiction, but again, we feel those calls on a regular basis. So when we're talking about investment in healthcare, care, we're talking about investment in people. And that is definitely something that we need to do. Uh, the healthcare system is in dire need. I don't know if it's only uh, dollars, it's a revamping. And I believe that what I'm seeing here is definitely a step in the right direction. I believe 50% of the budget almost is going into healthcare the increase. So that's a win-win again uh, for our residents. And that need and some of the programs that have been rolling out, I do see, uh, and I have heard from some residents that they're very pleased to see some of this. Still a deficit in the amount of uh, HR services that are available. And when we see that they're looking at increasing uh, nursing seats and building a nursing school and doing all these things, again, those are all things that will help alleviate the pressures that are on the healthcare system. Housing was another key priority for this government in this budget, and we we talked briefly about it at the beginning of the interview, but I want to dive into it a little bit further, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. uh, the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, which you are a part of as well, recently came out with a survey that it cost the average municipality $107,000 per unit, per unit, to for infrastructure for housing. Now, this government has sort of pledged to make housing a priority in this budget. Uh, you talk about the increase of $70 million to the municipal capital fund. That doesn't go a long way if each project is $107,000 for infrastructure. Uh, are you, and I don't want to ask the political question, but I'm going to have to a little bit. Are you going to be calling on Houston to increase it a little bit more? Well, the 70 million again was a welcomed addition. There's also another 15 million that went along with service exchange which is a new infrastructure pot that municipalities can apply for. Uh, every opportunity I get to speak to the premier or to speak to the minister, infrastructure uh, dollars is what municipalities really need. And this is something, again, that the federal government needs to play a role in as well, the housing accelerator fund. Um, they're rolling it out uh, to some municipalities, but I know there's a lot of municipalities still waiting to hear uh, whether or not they've been successful for that. And that is millions of dollars to municipalities. So I think that if, I'm not sure how long these announcements are or, um, in the coming, but we definitely are looking for more infrastructure dollars. So we've talked about what some of the goods were in this, and we were doing sort of a high level here, but where could the government have gone further? Because we, municipalities are sort of struggling right now, not just in Nova Scotia, but across mm -hmm. the country. Where do you think that the government could have gone a little bit further to help municipalities, both rural and urban, uh, address some of the municipal issues that they see? Well, again, those dollars in infrastructure are always important to us. So uh, any amount of money, additional money that comes into that is something that we look forward to receiving. Uh, another thing that the municipalities have been asking for since it actually came into fruition here was the, I believe, the amount of money that uh, is generated from the sale of cannabis. And some of those dollars in some provinces end up going back to municipalities. In Nova Scotia, it does not. And there's a $3 million additional revenue in the sale of cannabis this year. So... Uh, municipalities are looking for other revenue sources uh, to be able to be sustainable. Uh, 
they don't always want to be coming with a handout. <laughs> They're looking for ways that they can move forward and have revenue generating opportunities for themselves. And that was something that the uh, revenue sharing was something that they were looking for uh, in that. We, uh, we oh, continue. No. Well, I guess even with the, again, the housing piece of it, uh, there were initiatives welcomed definitely by municipalities in there. And I think by residents as a whole, when we look at the rent supplement increase, I think that's a step in the right direction. There were um, money in there for seniors or for low income households for more home repairs, which definitely helps. Um, but it's this whole housing and this whole initiative to build uh, a better Nova Scotia. And as I said earlier, in order to build that bigger and better Nova Scotia, we need to do it together. And the speed in which the province would like to see that happen cannot happen, I go back to, without including municipalities. Municipalities are the key people when it comes to housing, uh, when it comes to those pipes and the water and everything else. So uh, these are things that we definitely see as uh, a high priority for our municipalities. Do you think this budget strikes the right balance of helping both rural and urban municipalities in your in your province? Because you represent not only urban, like uh, as you mm -hmm. as the the rural community that you represent, but you represent urban communities as well. Does it strike a right balance to help all municipalities, or do you see gaps that are potentially uh, needed to fill in urban communities or rural communities? Or is it a carte blanche, everyone kind of got what they're, somewhat of what they were expecting? No, I wouldn't go as far as saying that everyone got what they want <laughs> by a long shot, because there's definitely uh, a lot of needs in our larger urban uh, centers. Uh, we see that on a day-to-day, -day, and we recognize that in order to have a strong Nova Scotia, you need a strong uh, engines driving them, and those are our commercial hubs and our centers. And that's everything from Cape Breton to Halifax to our, even our smaller uh, regional centers here. So uh, we definitely need to make sure that they are thriving for the rural municipalities to thrive. One last question before I, I do a wrap up here. Did municipalities come away from this budget better off than going into this budget? I would say yes, because I'm looking at even with service exchange alone and eliminating mandatory uh, contributions. There's 9.5 million in the housing offset. There's 7 million in corrections. There's 15 for uh, new infrastructure, along with the 70 million that was put in there outside of uh, service exchange. Um, there's a new road program in there, 6.1 million for municipalities. There's additional money that has been invested. And as well, I believe out of, I believe it's 47 million for cell service. I believe there's 15 million in the budget this year. And that's something that municipalities and residents have been asking for. That gap is huge. You do not have to leave the center of uh, many hubs before you are in dire need of uh, a tower or something to continue that cell coverage. So those are things that help. Uh, I think that helping our residents as well with the heating assistance and some of the other things that are in here are all good news stories. But again, I have to go back that the infrastructure needs of this province are huge and municipalities will continue to work to get more money from our federal and provincial governments in that respect. I, I, while it's still early days from the budget being tabled, I'm assuming uh, Nova Scotia Federation of Municipalities will be calling uh, uh, on uh, Premier Houston and the Minister of Finance and the Minister of Municipal Affairs to sit down and have these conversations so that way you can express somewhat of your uh, happiness, but also frustration that you didn't get exactly what you wanted, correct? Yeah, and that will be the case as we move forward. And we continue to have those conversations 
on a regular uh, day to day with our provincial counterparts. My last question for you before I let you go, because this will be my final question is, what are you telling your members after this budget? What are you gonna be saying to your members while we've talked about sort of the overarching theme and what the municipalities, uh, what can they be doing with their local MA, uh, their local uh, provincial politicians to ensure that the issues that you've talked about are being addressed locally as well with their local uh, provincial politicians? Well, again, just making sure that those infrastructure projects that ha they have applied for, that they continue to work with their MLAs to make sure that they do come to fruition. I think that's very important um, as well. I, I really believe that, uh, again, I go back to the federal provincial uh, municipal relationship, and I do believe that we need to thrive on that in order to get the dollars that we need from the federal government as well. And those accelerator funds are huge dollars that could be flowing through municipalities. Okay, I, I, you poked the bear a few times, so I'm gonna have to ask the follow-up question to that is, the provincial budget is going to be tabled here in a few months. Is there anything that you will be looking for specifically in the federal budget when it comes out? Or are you looking at FCM to do that advocacy work? Is there anything specifically from a Nova Scotia perspective that you're looking for in the federal government? Per, uh, uh, we do have meetings actually next week that we will be sitting down with the FCM. <laughs> Uh, so we are away for that all next week in that regard. So I'm hoping to uh, find out exactly what aspect the FCM uh, are doing. But again, it's a partnership and we need to continue to work together if we are going to accomplish great things for this province and for the country. Carolyn, I want to thank you so much for sitting down with me. I know I said a, a last question, last question, but that was my last question. So I do appreciate taking time out of your business schedule to do this. All right. Thank you. Now, if today's episode sparked your interest, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations on the cross-border interviews and our eye-opening exploration of local governance and the decisions in the political trenches, local government at work. Now, we are your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged. Now, your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of the top-notch content you have come to enjoy. If you can, consider backing the show today. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cronus Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, just keep talking.